I'm Aubrey, and last summer I bought a pirate ship. She's a 51 Formosa. Previously on Sailing This Lone Star, we worked on the old Ford Lehman and took delivery of our brand new mast and rigging from Selvin. This time, we're going to dig into what I consider to be the most important system on the boat. Welcome back to Sailing This Lone Star. Before we head over to the pirate ship, I'm gonna tell you guys how I found a dollar boat and what it took for me to get my captain's license. So I get lots of questions about this, so this one will be fun. To be eligible for the 100 ton captain's license, and even to take the test, you must be able to document 360 days experience on a vessel, and 90 of those days need to be within the last three years. I attended the Annapolis School of Seamanship, which I highly recommend. I also earned my auxiliary sailing endorsement and my towing endorsement, just in case. Previously on Sailing the Sloan Star, I went over what it took for me to learn how to sail and how I learned the lines. Uh, once I did learn how to sail enough to really strike out on my own, I started looking for a boat. Now, I didn't have all of the experience and all of the knowledge to really know what I needed in a liveaboard cruising boat. So I didn't want to invest a lot of money into my first cruising boat. I wanted to learn. I wanted to learn how to fix things. I wanted to learn how to manage the boat on my own. And I thought I should start really small. So what I did was I looked for a boat around 30 feet and I found a derelict 29 foot cow. So I did a lot of research on cows and they were beloved boats. It's not a cruising boat. It's definitely a weekend regatta type boat, but the layout inside was just perfect. In order to make it legal, I bought the boat for a dollar and it was an interesting and fun story and everyone really jumped on and started watching the channel, which leads to my next question that came up last week uh, here in the comment section was how did I afford to move onto the boat and to fix the boat? And that's a great question. And the answer is you guys, um, Patreon. And it was enough to live on, enough to start fixing this boat. Now let's head back over to the pirate ship. So we are in the aft stateroom and this is where all of the hydraulics live for the boat. So this boat's been on the hard for six or seven years and some of this hydraulic line looks a little old. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull all of this out and take it to a shop to have it inspected and Searle's going to replace some of the seals. So when we were uh, pulling the wheel back and forth and we can already see a leak in here and it would be horrible to lose steering out there. So let's take a look. So you can see some of the hydraulic fluids leaking. Okay, so the reason why we digging into this right now, even though hydraulic systems are so reliable, is that our interior home station is leaking terribly. Like, it's staining the teeth. So if we're gonna go to a hydraulic shop, we might as well take the major components. So as we can see in this unit, uh, instead of just having a single ram it has a dual ram setup we've got our motor for the autopilot pump is situated over here uh, you can see that there is some new hoses that have been added to the system however there are some older hoses here there's a bit of a leak going on and also it's just good to become familiar with your system in your boat so we're going to be taking the rams the hydraulic pump for the autopilot and both of the helm stations, the one outside and the interior helm station. I don't know what the turnaround time is going to be, but it'll be good to have a completely trustworthy, leak-free system. Agreed. What's all this schmancy stuff right here? This electric loom for the uh, mizzen mast. So all jokes aside, we're going to start with Searle's favorite, which is cleaning. I love his OCD. It's the perfect balance for my artist side. It's like, where is the, whatchamacallit? I'm like, probably everywhere. Does it make you so happy? Yeah. Does Dawn work well at removing hydraulic fluid? Yes, from Baby Ducklings. Haven't you seen the commercials? Uh, okay. So, do I first wipe it up with the Baby Duckling? <laughs> and then Dawn wash them? Alright, so, that looks like a mess, squirrel. Yeah, it's a mess. 
Sorrel's made a very good point. Uh, he's captain of the heart, I'm captain of the sea. <laughs> he's so good at projects. I don't know what I would do without him. I think that this project would take many years longer if I didn't have him with me. He's really amazing. Uh, don't tell him though. Why? Because oh. it's going to go straight to my head? Yeah. All of our sailing friends always want to steal him from me. They're like, hey, you know, if things don't work out with Aubrey, you can come live with me. I'm like, hey! Maybe we should have brought a cup in here. I feel like I said I was too that. eager. I want to fix these things, send these things off. So I can be captain again? No. <laughs> you know what the worst part about hydraulic fluid? Is that you're going to get that all over my face in a second? Why am I getting this righty tighty left loose? Whoa! Oh man. So Searle's turning the wheel. To pump all the fluid out. It's actually kind of beautiful. The photographer in me loves the color. <laughs> I've never had a hydraulic system before. I've only ever had the wire, uh, like the Edson pedestal type Is deal. It done pumping? No, it's not pump. It's still going. So this is all new for me. I'm learning a lot. Um, Searle's learning a lot. Holy mess! Babe, what? looks like a murder scene. Oh my gosh. Babe, why aren't you catching the fluid? With what? In your hands. Oh my god. Over the shoulder. As if it was a sinking boat. Oh my god, no. What's going on? Oh, well, we're pumping all the hydraulic fluid out of the system. And it's glorious and horrifying at the same time. Okay, so we were just talking to Kent this morning about how difficult it would be to steer this boat in an emergency, like with the emergency tiller. So Searle's down here with a spanner on the rudder post and he's trying to manually turn it. Now there isn't a lot of mechanical advantage uh, because he just has a spanner, but it's incredibly hard. This is a full keel boat with like a barn door worth of a rudder. So let's go check it out. This is phone a friend. This is Mike Beamer from the Skagit School of Marine Technology. They got two pressure lines and a return line, so. Okay, so um, I was also looking at the different size motors for the autopilot. Um, larger is better, or is there a consideration? Because I no, larger, larger in, in volume, especially with twin twin rams, you're going to want a, a higher volume pump. Otherwise, it's going to be sluggish when you run it on autopilot. You're going to have to show me how to bleed the system afterwards, because after I crack something, it looks like there was a blood uh, massacre. Okay, we have gotten one of the rams out. Canadian rams, by it's the way. It's a Canadian ram. That's why it works so well. Did you know William Gardner, the designer of this boat, is also Canadian? Okay. okay. It's heavy. Well, okay. Well, don't got it. Don't got it. Okay. Wah! <laughs> okay. 300 pounds of force! Eek! Teamwork makes the dream work. Listen, and this project's getting a little expensive, so we're going to try to reuse whatever we can. Safely, of course. Recycle for the environment and your pocketbook. Wow. Unicorn murder. Okay, yeah. so we're gonna remove here. Mm hmm. Gonna remove here. Mm hmm. And going to remove this one. Okay, and this is when we watch our own videos back to remember how things go back together. This job has progressed. So let's say it's screwed over. I'm coming, darling. Let me tell the people. Uh, my neck. While you wait in the bilge. <laughs> this job has progressed. We were taking the hydraulic um, system out for the steering, and now we are removing the autopilot. We're going to go with a new autopilot like we spoke about before with a larger pump. It moves 10 times the fluid. So we are chasing down all of the old wires. Something that I love and also makes me want to kill Searle is that he is so thorough. He's going to pull all of the old wires out of the boat. So we're going to do everything right and we're going to do it fast. Almost me. Alright. 
Last but not least, the interior helm. There's the pretty wheel. Wait. I'm excited to try out this um, helm down here. However, I cannot see over the bow, but I'm hoping that's because the, uh, what do you call them? I want to call them stanchions. They're not, um, boat. Why am I drawing a lake on this? The stands. Well, there's a name for the stands. They go into the boat. Okay, so the way it blocks. Blocks? Oh my gosh, my brain is broken. It must, be, must be all that hydraulic fluid. Okay, so the boat is positioned in a way where the bow is up a little higher than I think it would be in the water. So I'm hoping that I can see over the bow to use this interior helm. Well, we only see it when we're surfing down a wave and that's why you're inside. Yes. Okay, that's it. So anyway, we're gonna take this out. This is part of the hydraulic system. Then we're gonna go drop off and have checked and redo some of the hosing. Hosing? Piping. Wow, I'm struggling today. It's weird to think that's like, it's old as boat, huh? Yeah, older than both of us. Almost put together. Divots in there. Wow. All right. Oh, it's a girl. <laughs> and it goes in a box of parts. Yay. Okay, we've got one more home station to remove, one more steering wheel to remove, and I have to mess hydraulic fluid all over my pants one last time. No, those are in the pants. I wonder what those two blue cables were that came up. Okay, we are outside, obviously, and we're going to pull the main helm station out. It's different than the lower helm station. I love this wheel. Let's just let's just appreciate this wheel together right now. Helm. Wheel? Helm. Isn't that pretty? Round spinny thing. The sphere. The, round the, the sphere of beauty. So this allows you to adjust how many turns it takes for full rudder lock from port to starboard. Looks like our fuel tank's empty. How the hell do we get this in all these parts? Very sad we don't have the wheel on here. Now it's definitely not a sailboat. Aww. Now it's, what is, now it's just a camper van. Like <laughs> a very extraordinarily styled camper van. That's true. It's better than an Airstream. I do agree. It's called a boat stream. <laughs> if I could know then what I know now, I would have definitely probably waited a little bit more, saved a little bit more money, and purchased a boat that was a little bit closer to being ready to go. This boat, well, I love Little Miss. I still have Little Miss, but she was really probably due to be crushed. Um, it was really just a hull of the boat. There wasn't really anything else of significance or value in the boat. So everything had to be rebuilt. And that is exactly what I did. And wow, was it really a lesson. And I wouldn't take it back and I wouldn't change it because I learned so much, but I could have saved a lot of money if I would have just bought a boat for maybe $3,000 that had a running engine, proper rigging, and maybe some sales. Um, YouTube has definitely been a really important platform for me in completing this project. And you guys, the boat that I got for a dollar ended up costing me quite a bit of money to refit. So with the help of patrons coming out and making donations and amazing sponsors, I was able to really do a beautiful refit on this boat. And Little Miss is just a stunning little 29 foot liveaboard sailboat. I actually still have her and I go back and forth between whether I want to sell her or not. I am so attached, but she's a uh, beautiful little boat. So where can you find a dollar boat for yourself? Well, the answer is pretty simple. They are all over the place. People will get started on working on these cute little boats, some big, some small. Uh, you'd be amazed what you can find for, you know, under a thousand dollars out there. So you just go to different marinas and you see uh, who is trying to get rid of a boat. You go in and talk to the, the dock master or the person running the yard and they usually have a list of boats that are either about to be crushed or the owner hasn't paid their bill and you can get 
some really amazing boats for not a lot of money. Put in a little bit of elbow grease. I'm actually really impressed right now. Wow, muscles! I'm not six anymore. Wow! <clears throat> So I've ground out all of the paint on the starboard side. I am sweating, number one, and I feel like I am glowing. Wesson, Wesson. I feel so happy and my heart's so full right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven things on the backbone. So we need to have, you know, those NEMA, you get those like T connections. Mm -hmm. So we need to have, make sure that we have enough connections to link all these together. That's what's really cool about all this system that we're adding is that everything's just NEMA 2000 besides for the radar. Radar's got its own proprietary connection. Um, but you're not like messing with C talk and having to use conversion junctions. It's everything's just going to be new. Everything's going to be normal and the standard. What do you think, Blake? I think it's cool. Yeah. So the surface underneath the bed is prepped, and we're going to paint underneath the hydraulic system white. And the reason that we're doing that is so we can tell if there's any leaks. Right now it's blue, which makes it really hard to tell if there's anything going on as far as any fluids leaking. So the white's gonna make it easier. And you guys know how clean of a painter I am, said no one ever. So Stroll's wrapped up some of the things that he doesn't want paint on with foil. So he's done the prep work, I'm gonna do the dirty work. So let's get to it. So I'm using Total Boat Bilge Coat, and we have made this a nice off-white with uh, some of their topside paint in an almond. So I think it looks really good. I love these Total Boat products. They're super cool. They're a sponsor of ours, and uh, we love using their stuff. It looks good. It looks pretty good. I mean, whenever we get going, I realize all the things we should have taped and didn't, <laughs> but it looks good. I think. While they do the maintenance on our hydraulic system, let's go back to the spring of 2020. The time came when the children started to get bigger and the boat started to get smaller. So we were living with uh, two adults, two children and a dog on the boat, which was a challenge. It was beautiful and fun, but the kids really were looking to get some more space. So every night at dinner, Bianca would say, mom, do you think someday we could have a 50 foot boat? And I'm like, geez, babe, I don't know. Maybe like, maybe like a 38 foot boat or like a 40 foot boat someday. And um, I think Bianca's wishing upon a star really brought this to fruition. All right, you guys, here is the companionway of a 51 Formosa, my dream boat. After about a week, Skagit Hydraulics had our system ready to be reinstalled. We have arrived at Skagit Hydraulics, which is a family owned business that rebuilds hydraulic systems. So this ran us $375 and was totally worth it for the peace of mind. The hydraulic system to my knowledge has not been worked on since the birth of the boat. So um, now it's been rebuilt. There are some things I have to say, some components that do look newer than others, but um, if you lose steering out there, it's just it's kind of like losing a rudder. So um, I'm very happy to have this done. So let's go get our parts. Today, we are going to tackle 
There's a hydraulic pump behind the helm here and we're going to put that back in. It's been serviced and it's all fresh and new. So who fancy taped all the parts to the right parts? Well, it's one of the thought I had there. This is a three port helm station. Uh, so you've got like a reserve line that runs back to the helm station. So this does not give you positive feedback. So whatever you tilt, turn the helm in whatever direction, it will stay in that direction. I think this is what the boat came with and worked for the last, what, 50 years. It should work just fine for now. And it just... Can you put the camera down? Oh. Yep, it's good. So there was a leak. You can see the stain below his hand there. That's from the hy a hydraulic leak, which is part of the reason why we dove into this project to begin with, just make sure that everything is healthy. It'd be a bummer to lose steering out there. Perfect angle, not too much fussing around. We don't have cables having to retrieve down there. ready to go. Now it's time for round two. We're going to go put the uh -huh. uh, upper helm station out in the cockpit back together. And it's pretty simple. It looks like it's just a couple of hose fittings. And I love that Cyril always goes the extra mile to make sure things are future proof. He's the best. Her paint job didn't dry. Oh no. Oh no. Fine, I think it's just it pulled a little bit of the material. Let's put the, the rams in first. Okay. And then we'll... Ram so, number one. Do we know if it was like that or like that? Can you pull up old footage to find out? It's gonna be like that, because look at that fitting over there. Yeah. So now I should be able to pull a no problem, yeah. We have successfully installed the rams. Rams, Tilla. We have successfully installed the rams and the lines that have all been serviced and pretty stoked about that. I feel like we have a lot of peace of mind knowing that it's kind of like new. So what's up next? Rudder feedback sensor. Uh, otherwise you'll call it rudder position sensor. So basically when this thing turns, you want this thing to turn. So we just need to build a bracket, like a, a hanging bracket off one of these supports here. And we've got this link to link the two. You can cut this shorter or make it longer or whatever, but you want to make sure that this center point is center point with this. Thinking something like that. So this is gonna be placed down here. On there, it mounts with two screws and we've got the three uh, fittings there. So you've got your port side, starboard, and your reservoir. We've engineered this bracket. But now we're gonna have to engineer a bracket to the bracket. We are? For the next bracket. All right, looks pretty good. It's, 
is many hours later and we are still in the aft cabin. What have you made, Searle? It looks like a penis. Show them. It's another penis shaped template. <laughs> hmm? Show yeah. them. Who make fun of my templates? It's a really great bracket. <laughs> but it's this thing. It could have been a square or a rectangle, I mean. You could have made it a rectangle. What, one giant square plate? Yeah. No, I was going to do a triangle. And then you just decided to go penis. full penis. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good. I'm a little nervous. It's getting late, but the clock is ticking, my friends. And we have to get this boat in the water. So we are burning the midnight oil. And we also have to finish this because this is where we sleep. <laughs> Are you proud of that? I am proud of that. All right. Okay, so, Vanna White. Now the thing is, we're gonna have to take a little bit of material off. I hate it when he says that. We have to take a little material off. That means cut the boat apart. It's like when the doctor says they're gonna remove some tissue. Meanwhile, they're doing like a full amputation. Hey. <laughs> I think it's just about time to call it a night and we'll give this system a test next time. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on Sailing the Slum Star.